नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स इन दिस डिस्कोर्स वी आर गोइंग टू एग्जामिन द थर्ड इम्पॉर्टेंट अंग और थर्ड इम्पॉर्टेंट लिंब in the astanga yoga propounded by patanjali in the last uh, 10 to 15 discourses we have examined uh, the five principles of yama and the five principles of niyama the first two limbs of uh, astanga yoga in greater detail and as the speaker has repeatedly emphasized that we need to develop these values in order to tread the path of yoga yoga has no meaning without uh, observing these virtues as the speaker has said that these virtues lays a strong ethical foundation and this strong ethical foundation is absolutely necessary in order to tread the spiritual path or the yogic life <coughs> but the speaker has also said that uh, all these virtues can be simultaneously aligned with uh, the other angas like uh, asana pranayama pratyahara dharana and dhyana they need not be observed uh, um, individually so each limb has its own link with the other limb in the ashtanga yoga in the present discourse we will take up uh, <coughs> the third important limb that is asana asana actually stands for posture body posture but um, patanjali has not um, discussed various types of asanas that or in practice he introduces asana in one sutra that is sutra number 46 in the second section of the yoga sutras known as sadhana pada <coughs> the sutra reads like this sthira sukham asanam contains only three words and uh, nowhere do we find uh, the description of various postures that are in practice because uh, 
Well, the speaker has already said, Patanjali's yoga is called Raja Yoga. It's not Hatha Yoga. The sage Patanjali directly deals with the mind. Because the mind is the, the pivot in yogic life. In fact, it is the center that creates all confusion and disorder in our life. Therefore, if this mind is properly understood, and uh, tame, you know, taming, taming, the human mind is like a, a lion. It's very difficult to tame a lion, to catch a lion and bring it under control. It's very ferocious animal and so the mind is like a, a lion and it has to be tamed. How it has to be tamed? I mean, how this mind has to be brought under control? But. The word control is a bad word here. The speaker would like to use uh, understand. Understand this uh, lion-like mind and tame it and try to transcend its limitations. That is what yoga is, ultimately. And this is the way how Patanjali has defined in the second sutra of the first book called Samadhipada. Chitta Vritti Niroda Yoga. And that sums up Patanjali's yogic philosophy. So Patanjali's yoga is mainly aimed at controlling the mind and transcending this mind. And if this mind is, uh, is properly understood and tamed. And if this monkey-like mind is transcended and that is what exactly yoga is, the transcendence of mind this monkey-like mind. So when it is um, transcendent, one uh, will establish that beautiful communion with the whole creation. But that communion cannot now happen because of this cloud-like mind. And uh, we have already learned what this mind is. This mind is understood only in relation to thought, in relation to images that we create, in relation to experience 
in relation to memory, in relation to all those samskaras and vasanas, tendencies and so on. So when these say, or uh, eliminated, then uh, we enter into a, a state of calmness. That state is called poised, state of poise, state of calmness, balance. And it is only in that state of utter calmness yoga happens. And that state of utter calmness where there is no mind and that no mind state is what you see the, the whole creation. And it is only in that uh, no mind state, a perfect communion, a perfect union can be established with the creation outside. And this is the ultimate goal of yoga. And this is what is aimed at in Patanjali's yogic philosophy. Therefore, Patanjali's yoga is called Raja Yoga. Because in Raja Yoga, mind is the center. It directly hits the mind. Because the mind is the cause of all uh, confusion, disorder, and so on. And therefore, if this mind is properly understood, tamed and transcended, then we enter into that state called yoga. And this is the way how Patanjali defines what yoga is. So therefore, Patanjali's yoga should not be confused with uh, Hatha yoga. <coughs> Hatha yoga was developed only in the 16th century. So it's just uh, 400 year old, not more than that. Hatha is a combination of uh, two Sanskrit uh, expressions, ha and ta. Ha represents the sun, Ta represents the moon. Ha represents the Pingali, Pingala Nadi, that is the left, right nostril. And then uh, that is uh, the moon, it represents the coolness, so the left nostril is represented by Ta. And the union between these two, that is the sun and the moon, the heat and the cold, 
pingala nadi and ida nadi when these two are united then the pranic force is awakened right from the muladhara chakra that is the root and then passes through the the nadi called sushma nadi and enters the final state where it gets dissolved that is altogether a different kind of uh, yogic science called uh, kundalini yoga let's not worry about it because we can't do that without a, a right guru and that right guru also must have undergone that kind of experience otherwise he is not fit to teach this particular kind of yoga called kundalini yoga the awakening of the serpent power that lies at the muladhara chakra but it is enough if we understand the meaning of hatha but hatha yoga is mainly focused on the body because hatha yoga treats body as sacred a temple within which the mind lives this is the form the body is the form so form is more important if there is no form there is no mind there is no pranic force nothing can be attained nothing can be practiced so therefore hatha yoga has given more stress to this body and if this body is properly trained trained in order to make a, a, a fit vehicle for a, the practice of a, the raja yoga that is higher yoga so in hatha yoga body is given more importance so it's not enough to have a, a mere form a mere body that body must also be ready to take up the higher path so the body must be trained must be properly purified all toxic elements in the body must be eliminated it must become supple flexible elastic rubber like so that this body will be free from disease and when body is freed from disease it gains that uh, that great strength of health and when you become strong in health then uh, the body is ready to tread the path the higher path in yoga because uh, the hatha yoga fundamentally believes 
that body has its impact on mind. If the body goes wrong, the mind will not function properly. Look at ourselves when a, there is a slight um, rise in temperature, body temperature. We almost go panic. We become restless and we can't do anything because the mind cannot focus. Because the mind is uh, linked with the body and whatever happens in the body has its direct uh, impact upon the mind. Therefore, if the body is out of order, the mind also cannot concentrate on anything. The mind also goes out of order. So this is the link between the body and the mind. And therefore in Hatha Yoga, the body is given such a high priority. And if this body is properly taken care of, properly trained, properly made a fit vehicle, then the whole physiognomy is fit for treading the path of yoga. This is the basic philosophy of Hatha Yoga. Hence, body is given more priority. This is the difference between Raja Yoga and Hatha Yoga. Raja Yoga is mainly focused on mind. Whereas Hatha Yoga deals with the body. But both are not different forms of Yoga. Both are not separate. Both cannot have their independent identities. They are not separate entities. Both need to be integrated. So, Hatha Yoga must be combined with Raja Yoga. Once you gain perfection in Hatha Yoga, you can move to Raja Yoga. But there are people who directly enter into Raja Yoga because as the speaker has just now said, the mind is the center of all uh, actions and creations in the world. Therefore, if it is properly understood, tamed and transcended, There is no need for the sadhaka to start with the body. But that is a, a, a difficult path, rather. So it takes longer time. But then, those who directly enter Raja Yoga may tend to neglect body. So this dangerous pitfall will be there for those who directly enter into Raja Yoga. So there is a, a likelihood of neglecting the body. And after all, body is 
very important because without body there is no mind. Because mind dwells in the body. Therefore, the speaker says the two must be integrated. Hatha Yoga is not different from Raja Yoga. A Raja Yoga is not different from Hatha Yoga. Both should be integrated. So that <coughs> a perfect balance between body and mind can be made. And this is what yoga is. Because one of the meanings of yoga that we have already learnt is union. The union between body and mind has to be first established here before union with the cosmos or creation or nature can be established. So therefore the union between body and mind should first happen here. Then the union with the outside cosmos can automatically take place without our volition. So, this is the difference between Hatha Yoga and uh, Raja Yoga. So, Patanjali has not discussed various forms of uh, asanas, but he has given a, a perfect, beautiful, and a comprehensive definition of what asana is. Sthira Sukham Asanam. There are three words here. Sthira Sukham Asanam. Asanam we have just now learnt. It stands for posture, body posture. Sthira. Sthira means stable. Sukha means comfort. That is, whatever the body posture that we may have to do the higher yoga that contains dhyana, dharana and dhyana, that is concentration and meditation, we must first achieve the Sthira, that is a stable position, a stable posture. Stable posture here means we can adopt any posture. For example, let's take a Padmasana. When you sit in that lotus position, Can you stabilize that position? Can you remain in that posture for long without moving your body, without making any adjustments in your body? Can you sit in Padmasana with your back erect without any motion? for certain period and this is called sthira because that stability is very important. When the body is stable it has a direct connection with the mind. When the body is disturbed Suppose there is a movement in the body, in, in, the, in the posture, in the Padmasana posture, if you make any adjustment, it will not stabilize the mind. The stable posture has its direct impact on the stability of mind. So stable posture and stable mind. 
stable posture leads to stable mind. Because when you sit in a particular posture for long without any movement, without any adjustment, then there will be a, a perfect flow of blood. There will be a, an equanimity in your body. All organs, internal organs of your body are brought under control and there is no movement. And in that state of perfect motionlessness, there is a direct flow of energy to the mind. The flow of blood will be even. The flow of energy will be even. And if such an equanimity is established within the body, automatically the stability of mind can be achieved. That mind, that restless mind can be stabilized. This is the link between the body and mind. And this is the link between the stable posture and uh, the stable mind. And Sukha, that you should not feel any discomfort in that posture. You should not feel any pain in it. 